Good morning and uh, welcome to the next round of uh, vlogging. Uh, today we are at a place called Big Ditch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Big Ditch is kind of in the Skagit area. It's not too far from our usual stomping grounds at Wiley Slough, uh, which is Skagit Wildlife Area. Uh, but today we decided to try something new. Uh, it's midwinter break, so you don't get to go out often on a Monday. So my son and I are out here uh, with our cameras. Uh, he's just off camera over here. As you can tell, it's really cold. It's snowing. Uh, Seattle hasn't seen snow since the, hol the holidays, I think, since December. And uh, uh, it was actually supposed to snow here last night. It's about 34, 35 degrees. So it's cold and uh, slushy underfoot, but it does look absolutely stunning. So it's great to be out in the open, in the cold air, and hopefully we'll see some birds. I have no idea. As usual, uh, the fun part about birding is, as I've said it in my other videos, you really have no idea what you'll see. So today, our goal is to actually go to maybe multiple places. This place is called Big Ditch. Uh, you can see the bay over here, there, up out there, which is Puget Sound. Uh, there's all this icy, swampy area here, which on a warm day, we're probably full of showbirds. It's also early in the morning. And uh, once we are done with this, we will try and head out to our usual, uh, to places like Wiley Slough maybe, maybe to Lakwe Island. Um, we'll see what we see. Uh, definitely according to eBird and the hot and hotspots, there's been a lot of birds here. So we'll check it out. That's a juvenile bald eagle that just flew into that tree. I got some good video of that flying in. So this place is quite full of uh, birds of prey. We've seen more than two harriers, a bald eagle, one peregrine falcon. Uh, just already worth it. Worth the visit. So. We are trying to get a better angle on the eagle. Uh, if you're, oh, it's got its head turned. Um, so let's do that. And one of the nice things is uh, you always run into interesting people. Uh, we just met this gentleman who apparently comes, he's been coming here every day for the last three weeks. He's not a birder, he's a landscape photographer, and he gives some nice tips. And it turned out he had exactly the same, well, not exactly, very similar gear to what I had. Uh, he had uh, the same bag, just a different color with the Gorilla Pod on the side, uh, very similar camera and uh, lens setup, but Sony instead of uh, Canon, like we do. And uh, it was good fun. Uh, he also ended up taking pictures of us because uh, people find it intriguing to have the two of us with our big lenses around. So we are now at our second stop of the day. Uh, it's a place called Fur Island Farm. It's actually a place we've come to much more often um, in the past. You get showbirds, herons, uh, hawks, lots of ducks. And uh, there's actually a bald eagle right there. There's two of them. Uh, they're the nest, so they show up there quite often. Uh, the key is that we are out in this absolutely beautiful part of the state uh, in Skagit Valley. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see it uh, with the sunshine, this Mount Baker right behind us, absolutely glorious. Actually worth taking a picture. It's far, it's far away, so you can even use a 100mm lens to do it. So 
So, one of the nice parts of this part of the world is there's all these estuaries, and this one is one of them. Uh, they've actually doing, been doing some restoration here, so there's a little bit of construction going on. Uh, but what they've done is pretty darn good. Definitely like it. So today I wanted to talk about how to get into bird photography. I became a birder when I was a kid and I didn't actually do any bird photography till I was much older, till only about 15, 20 years ago was the first time. Uh, and I had a Canon 70 with a 7200mm lens and we went to take pictures of snowy owls. I even had an extender. And very quickly we realized that it wasn't gonna cut it. That particular trip worked out the birds were big, close, but the moment the bird gets smaller or further away, you're always going to regret it. Uh, the second time I learned that lesson was when my son started getting into bird photography. We gave him my EOS RP and a 70 to 200 mm lens. And after some time, it was pretty clear that the birds he wanted to take pictures of were just not possible with a lens that short. Uh, so we switched to a 600 mm RF F by 11 because I didn't want to buy a super expensive lens. Um, the camera doesn't really matter, although with modern autofocus systems, you want to take advantage of them if you're really into it. But the key was get the reach. I've learned that lesson twice. If you're getting into bird photography, uh, start off with a simple, pick the, any camera you want, but get at least a 400 mm lens. If you don't, and the reason I looked by is there's a heron flying right over there. Uh, if you don't, you're going to regret it. Uh, and so that's my bird f birding lesson for today, especially when it comes to bird photography. My fingers are freezing. Is it even frozen? Uh, I don't know, but my fingers are freezing. The mountains, look up, the mountains look absolutely lovely. Snow is melting. Last time I came here, it was actually quite dry. There was no water here and to the left. But today it's completely full. Uh, quite lovely and which means that we should see a lot of waterfowl but probably fewer showbirds it's also high tide from what I can tell I can you can see the a female bufflehead and a cormorant in the water over there So we are back at one of our favorite places uh, for birds. And this is a place called Wiley Slough. Uh, it's part of the Skagit Wildlife Area. You need a Discover Pass, for example, to pass here, park here. Uh, it's also estuaries. At the back, you get to the bay. Uh, we have been here so often. Uh, it has the advantage of being literally an hour door to door uh, from our place to here, roughly, uh, more or less, depending on traffic. Usually in the morning, it's an hour. And uh, it was also the place where we saw, uh, got a phenomenal look at a great horned owl and two babies, uh, baby great horned owls. Um, so anyway, uh, we are going to just walk around. Uh, you'll tend to see there's a bald eagle nest, you'll see harriers, you'll see snow geese in the distance. 
at this time of the year. Lots of waterfowl, some shorebirds probably. Uh, so, you know, it's one of our favorite places. I can come here pretty much every day. It's probably my favorite place to go birding in uh, the Western Washington. Uh, it was close, I'd probably be here every day. So that's a little blind, uh, as you can tell, my son is in there taking pictures of swans amongst other things. It's quite uh, beautiful here. You can see buffalo heads, swans, ringneck duck out there too, and a teal. So we are now at our fourth location. This place is called Laque Island, uh, specifically a place called ID Road. There's a strip of land that goes into an estuary. Wait for shorebirds. Uh, it's how we found it back a couple of years ago. And you see a bunch of dunlin flying around today, but with the snow around and how cold it is, let's see how it goes. So we finally found some shorebirds. Uh, over there, there are a bunch of what look like yellow legs. There's a couple that are darker. We'll have to go check on whether that's the plumage at this time of the year. Uh, the other lesson that I... So, <laughs> uh, just now, uh, this thing just almost fell. I'm on a monopod actually for the first time last uh, if you remember last time i was complaining that uh, carrying a gorilla pod is way too much work so this time i decided to use a monopod and i've been using it all day uh, but it's kind of windy here and it didn't stay up so i'm actually holding it uh, but at least it's on the ground and i'm not uh, trying to uh, you know hold a gorilla pod and, and a heavy camera together so anyway more later, right now I need to collect my bits. So this beats a gorilla pod because I at least have something uh, stable on the ground. Uh, so by the way, the thing I'm using right now is an iPhoto Cobra 2 tripod. I learned about it on um, DP Review uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I forget his name, the one who does all the video. Uh, he uses it. And I also saw Joe Allen talk about it uh, as his vlogging sort of setup, and I decided to give it a try. Uh, the one challenge is, and it's something I actually want to talk about at some point, is as a birder, I'm carrying so much gear, it's getting a little tricky doing two heavy cameras, a bunch of lenses, a backpack. So I have to figure out how this is going to sustain over time. Uh, but uh, for now, this will have to do. The last thing I wanted to talk about today, well, hopefully the last thing, 
is that as a birder, sometimes there's two things you can do. There are some folks who sit in one place and take a, one picture or a few. They wait for the birds to come to them. The thing I've talked about before is I like just being out in nature, so that seems weird. Uh, the photography is an add-on to what I like being, which is just outside and watching birds. So we walk around a lot. Uh, today, we've driven around a lot. This is our fourth location in the Skagit area. Uh, this is uh, Lakwe Island, ID Road. Uh, again, estuarine waters, it's great. It's freezing cold, but that's the story for today. This tree is somewhat special to me. Uh, when we first came here, one of the first pictures I ever took at the full-frame mirrorless camera was a picture of this tree. Still have it. Uh, it's actually a phenomenal photo, except that I was too close. I didn't leave enough space around it. So I don't show people the picture as often, but it's one of my favorite pictures ever. We're gonna go home now. It's the end of our journey. Uh, I think we're too cold and too tired to look at any more locations. I've uh, probably got a hot cup of coffee or a hot chocolate waiting for me somewhere. Uh, it's a great day. And, uh, you know, the lessons to be learned today, I think if you uh, go by uh, today's uh, vlog, uh, are when you get a lo long lens, I think for bird photography, that's essential. Uh, if you like walking around and you want to take video of yourself, carry a monopod, definitely helps, especially one with feet. Uh, doesn't quite work when it's just windy. Uh, the other one is, at least this is my preference, is try multiple locations, uh, have a plan. Don't assume you know what birds you're gonna see, but kind of know where you're gonna go. Uh, that definitely helps. Uh, so we went to four locations today. We saw a bunch of birds, um, especially for how cold it is, not too bad. And I'm sure there's another lesson somewhere which I've already forgotten, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of fun uh, doing this and uh, we quite enjoy it. Hope you, hope you like this one and, uh, you know, keep trying this, this medium and trying this format and see where it ends up.